How are we doing today, folks? Today I have a nice tech review for you. A little uh, different than what I usually do in the past, but actually my review is what I'm currently sitting in. Um, lately we've been uh, looking at what we were doing at work and I no longer needed a large truck guy like I had. So we decided that we uh, were gonna trade it in, get myself back down to a, a half ton pickup, and uh, we uh, looked all over the market at the different trucks out there, and I put in my recommendation for the new Dodge Ram 1500 quad cab. The quad cab's a little smaller interior room than the crew cab, and I thought, well, you know what? What gets more techy to a guy than a truck? So, with that said, I'd like to show you off my new truck. And in the process, give you my hope, my, my feelings on the truck. I've had it for a week now, put almost 200 miles on it myself. And I think I have an overall f concept of how she's been driving and how she, uh, how she handles. And I'd like to give you my rundown of it right now on the Tech Gooch program. So sit back and relax and uh, hope maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll just like what you see. And uh, it's great guy eye candy, if nothing else. So yeah, here we go. So here she is. This is obviously the dash. It's a Ram 1500 Bighorn model. It has the center console with the bucket seats, which I really love. And uh, it's pretty uh, basic in most senses of what uh, a lot of trucks and stuff have them on today. My last truck had navigation and all the leather and sunroof, which I didn't want or need. So we kind of went back to what I we wanted and what we needed. And this is... Uh, what we came up with and uh, it's actually really really nice um, let's see the uh, we did get the quad cab rather than the crew cab we still get four doors in the Dodge which is what makes it possible for me because I have to have four doors but um, I don't need as much space really for the most part my kids sit in the back so I do have car seats typically back there I took them out for the video here to show what the back seats like and uh, it is quite the back seat. Uh, the really nice thing, I really, I'm a big proponent. I love center consoles. And so far I've had an S10 that had a center console. And both my half ton Chevy and my last three quarter ton Chevy all had center consoles as well. This is by far my, my favorite center console I've had yet. Uh, I really like the bucket seats. They're really comfortable. Uh, the center console, as with most of them today, you get two storage compartments. A top storage compartment, which is for light duty, small things. I put my sunglasses, things for work in here. Some Right now I actually have a receipt, obviously. A small flashlight. And they do put a power plug here in case you want to charge your cell phone or other electronic device that you can fit inside the smaller compartment. It's not near as thick. If I actually put it down here, you can see you know, it's pretty slim. Although they do cup out the top here, you can put some taller things in here. Like my sunglasses are obviously the tallest that I currently have in there. Then there's a secondary latch. This is the latch for this one. Secondary latch down below here for the larger bin, which is deep. Um, I put, I have a receipt holder and, you know, like my old TomTom Tom device for for my iPhone. And you can, you can fit a lot of stuff in here. Um, I have a first aid book just in case. Lots of different things. Sunglass holders are kind of miscellaneous junk bin that I really don't access a whole lot. And I uh, really like it. That's where I keep my little vitamin case that I use. But that's not important. Um, you do need a little bin here. I got a lot of pens and pencils that I got to act, sort through and put where I need to put. Obviously, I've only been here a week, so there's some things that are not in here or not in the right place. Um, you do get another 12 volt power here for. Well, currently, I use that for my my Tom Tom to charge my iPhone while I listen to the radio. So, um, little cubby bin for whatever I got to screw in there right now. Not important. I, you do get the nice, when you get the center console, they put the shifter down here, which I, I actually really like as well. I didn't know how much I'd like it until I have it. I, you just It just feels more natural down here than on the steering wheel. Um, you do get the standard Chrysler knobs my buddy has on his, like he has a Chrysler um, Sebring. Very similar basically setup for the most part in the, the radio electronics region here with the whole air control and everything. 
Uh, there's a tow, tow haul mode on the engine, uh, traction control. There is a power outlet. When you get the center console, you do get an actual uh, power outlet in it. They put an inverter in there, a 115 volt inverter. And uh, this is the, the button to turn it on or off. And then uh, I just have the standard radio. Nothing fancy. I don't even have Uconnect in this module. Well, Uconnect is uh, Chrysler's Bluetooth capability for hands-free calling. And I didn't get it in this. I wish I did, but, you know, it wasn't a deal breaker. Uh, they just didn't have one available. And nothing available in the surrounding facility, vicinity. So uh, we just kind of chose that was one option we were willing to give up. You can add those to multiple radios. However, to get the standard Bluetooth, you have to have the button that has the, blue, the calling button on this radio. It does not. So as far as I'm told so far, you can't add the Uconnect module to this. I think there is a way to add it and then have an external calling button. I'm not 100% sure about that yet. So if you're looking into this and you see the same thing, comment below and uh, let us know what you think or what you found. If you're a if you know more about these radios than I do even, and I know a lot, or I know a significant amount about the different radios out there. But this is the Media Center 130 without the Uconnect buttons. There is a Uconnect radio, or a button that, uh, a radio very similar to this, has a couple extra buttons up here, and there's actually, right here I think where this random button is, there's a voice dialing button. You may not have the Uconnect module on your, on it, but that one is upgradable at least, to add the Bluetooth feature. Okay, so, Let's see, um, you get the standard Chrysler key now with the Dodge, which is obviously everybody thinks is funky as heck, but I really like it. Um, not like it matters at all, but um, I don't know if you're familiar with these at all, but this obviously turns your vehicle on and then has the remote unlock and lock and panic and remote start if you have it accessible on your vehicle. However, if their battery goes dead, or if you're in a, I've been in spots with my van, I have a, um, a Dodge Grand Caravan where there was, I couldn't unlock or lock my doors with this because of some kind of interference. And so what happens is, if I can do this one-handedly, this little slider thing here. I'm gonna just kinda do this here. Slide that, and what you get is you get a full key that's hidden inside so you can actually unlock the lock the doors from using the key rather than the key fob what that does is it unlocks your doors however the alarm will most likely sound if you didn't lock it with that and uh, then you'll have to stick this in the ignition start the vehicle and that'll turn the alarm off okay so that's the basic features here I have four-wheel drive on this one and uh, I'll show you the glove boxes as well real quick just the standard, you know, where they used to put the airbag. Obviously, now it's up here now. Um, and then the lower glove box, where I actually have my manual. I put a, a larger flashlight in and some other stuff. So I got lots of storage room, lots of places to put things. Okay, so here we have uh, my center instrument cluster. There is actually um, a instrumentation display here that will actually tell you a lot about the truck while you're driving and um, while I'm sitting here, I'm not even going to turn the engine on, I'm just going to turn it to run. So, um, right now you can see, sorry about the dinging, uh, right now it says radio off. If I actually turn the radio on, it'll actually tell you what station I'm on. And uh, so if I flip stations, it'll change to let you know. You don't have to look at the radio to know what you're doing, so I'll keep it off so I'm not listening to that. Fuel economy is, um, and the, the way I'm going through this is actually buttons here on the steering wheel that are taking me through, and they're pretty self-explanatory what they do. Um, fuel saver, you can go, or fuel economy, you can look at what your average fuel economy is, uh, and distance to empty, and then this will actually show you while you're driving the actual f miles per gallon in in time, you know, um, the little arrow shows you where your average is, and so you obviously want to try to keep it above average. It'll also tell you a little eco mode. Um, the eco mode will brighten up, it'll light up and say eco if you're driving in a fuel efficient manner. Um, I've been driving a lot in town for the first half of my first tank here, so I've been getting pretty low fuel economy. Uh, however, I've noticed that as soon as I get on the highway, it comes up quite a bit. On average, I think. I'm thinking it's probably going to be around the 14 to 15 number 
um, when I'm driving around town for the most part, and then when I'm on the highway, I'm assuming that's going to go up probably to the, the 18 to 20 range. I don't know yet because I haven't really done any highway driving. So um, with that said, I'm going to hit back and back out of that. Uh, you can obviously reset the fuel economy from in that window as well. You can see your tire pressure from in here. Uh, it'll tell you the tire pressure of all four tires, which I think is fantastic. Vehicle information. If we go to this one, it'll tell you your coolant temperature, your oil temperature, oil pressure, trans temperature. Obviously, I don't have any pressure right now because I'm not the engine isn't even running. Uh, if you have a brake controller, it'll tell you what your uh, your voltage is set at, how many hours you have on the engine. So 10 hours on the engine currently. Messages. This would be obviously if I have any messages for my if I have a warning or anything like that. If I have need an oil change, it's going to tell me here. Uh, you can change your units to display. System setup has some things. You can select your language. language, And then things that I think are always a pain in the butt. Because you all oh, hit the brake pedal six times, blah, blah, blah. You can all do that from in here. You can check or uncheck if you want the auto lock doors. Auto, auto unlock doors, you know, when you stop. All these different things here. Horn with select. Horn with remote lock. Uh, flash the lamps when you lock. Um, what's another big one? Uh, Assist to spare the fuel saver if you really want if you really care if you don't want to care you can turn that off You can even change the type of trailer brakes your trailer has if you again if you have the trailer brake um, You can calibrate the compass and uh, the variance of that compass as well So a lot of really neat handy little features that come in within this even the system set up here uh, You can also turn the menu off which I'm not going to do uh, Also, it'll tell you which way you're pointed right now. I'm pointed due north it's 54 degrees outside, and I have 200 miles on my odometer. So, real simple setup. Uh, if you've seen the the Ford system is really fancy, it's color and everything like that. However, this is just a lot easier to read while you're driving, and it doesn't distract from you driving either. Also, you can see the gauges all around, pretty easy. I wish the fuel gauge was a little bigger, but you know, at the same time, I'm just used to what I've had in the past, so nothing big or wrong there. One other nifty little feature on this truck, I don't have a whole lot of options up here, I don't have the home link, which I do wish I had, so I have to put this here, but, uh, is this little guy, and that is a rear sliding window, which, you know, realistically, isn't a big deal, but man, is that a nice, handy little feature. I really like that. Uh, and the lighting, of course, is, uh, pretty simple, just like most other lighting in the past has always been. And I, obviously, I just have the standard... Uh, rear view mirror, but uh, I do have heated mirrors on the side, which I really like. I don't have the auto dimming mirrors or anything like that, which I have on my van and realistically don't are not as nice in the view of the mirror themselves, but uh, they do work really well for the auto dimming feature. Okay, so here we are in the back seat. Um, I was going to show you some of the things that you get with the back seat if you get the right module. The seats just flip up in the quad cab, fold really flat against the back here. Uh, it's not quite back to the back of, uh, back of the door, but pretty tight. The door, I do like this with the quad cap because it's a smaller door in the back. The door almost opens exactly 90 degrees, so you actually have a lot of room to get in and out. Uh, you do get, I got the, the float, fold flat storage with mine. I'll show you how it in a second, but here's the storage you get underneath the seat. I just have my, uh, my toe strap, some chains, and a, a coupler in case I need to pull somebody out or something, like, or if I get stuck, I guess. Um, then there's also when you actually close this there's a little buckle latch that will hold it down so it doesn't pop up on you. Um, actually I can leave that closed to show you the next part. The fold flat storage, if you actually grab onto this little guy right here, there's a leg here. So I fold it flat. Now I actually have a nice flat surface without putting anything on the seat itself not damaging the seat I can pull the seat up put this down and I get a nice flat surface to put any luggage or anything else I have and store that up here then you also get whatever room down here to put stuff below as well something smaller that you don't want to get crushed but have easily accessible after you stack crap on top of this another small little place down here and average obviously it's pretty neat same thing over here it's just a split bench so you get the same thing just double and uh, you also oh, I have that strap down so I can't show you that. So that's the back seat. So at this time, of course I'm outside and people are cutting their lawn. Uh, I thought I'd do a quick rock around and show you what the actual vehicle looks like from, well, it's got, 
this is about a week's worth of dirt on it. I haven't washed it or anything or detailed it or anything yet, but the truck is quite beautiful looking. Um, I have uh, the big horn model comes with the chrome bumper and things of that nature. Uh, this is uh, I have the painted aluminum wheels on this one, which I think come standard on the Bighorn model. Uh, my father, who got the same truck, basically we have two almost identical. He has the chrome rims. Chrome rims look beautiful on it. To be honest, the chrome doesn't look better, but uh, the aluminum wheels just look, look just as nice. We have the standard mirrors. I don't have the turn signals on the mirrors, and they're not chrome, but uh, they are. They look quite well. They're actually pretty nicely sized. When you're actually uh, pulling a trailer or anything, the, the size of the mirror actually works really well. The chrome uh, handles really accent the black really well. I mean, this is a black truck, so it uh, really looks really nice. I have an old uh, bike rack that I've had for years. I wasn't able to use it in my last truck because I had a, a rolling cover on it. Uh, this time I'm getting a topper, which I'm hoping to do a review on once I get it. Um, but uh, this will be able to, I'll be able to use that again. Not part of the truck, but just thought that was cool. Um, Let's see what else is neat about it. You do get uh, the fairing, whatever the, you, they call it, rear, um, the spoiler, I guess, ask on the tailgate. Really beautiful tailgate. Uh, the handle is actually placed really nicely so you can just pull and put, drop down. And then I put the rubber mat in the back of the truck as well. And it's quite nice for uh, purposes for... Uh, work so then things don't slide around and I can always remove it wash the back of the truck real easily I on the Bighorn package you also get the uh, dual exhaust which you can get on a lot of different packages as well and uh, I say what well, out here in a minute I'm gonna actually start the truck and the sound that it makes is fa phenomenal this side is obviously the same thing as the other side. And I did want to point out something that I haven't pointed out yet, and I'll show you in the engine compartment. We did get the 5.7 liter Hemi on the trucks. We do need to pull trailers. Uh, nothing huge. Uh, about 8,000 pounds, I think, is the biggest trailer we have now. So uh, with uh, the 3.55 gear, uh, gear uh, ratio that we get on the truck with the 5.7 liter with the crew cab, uh, we get a little better fuel economy than you get with the 3.92, but we can pull 8,500 pounds basically with this puppy. That's our maximum to trailering capacity. However, if you get the 3.92, I think that jumps over 10,000 pounds, which is amazing. And this truck has plenty of power to boot. Okay, so here's the engine compartment of the 1500 Dodge Ram with the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi. Um, it is. A beautiful, beautiful engine, to be honest. Uh, easy access to almost anything you need to service on it for the most part. Uh, this is obviously coming from a person that had uh, Chevys in the past, and more than anything else, I had a diesel in my last truck, so it's got you know a pretty big engine there, so they jam a lot of stuff in there. For a gas engine, for spe specifically for the size of gas engine, this is it's pretty nice. The only thing that's harder to reach for than anybody else I've ever had is where you put the oil in. Which I don't know why, it's way the hell back here, but you know what, it's not a huge deal how often, you know, you change your oil every so often, so, but not a huge deal, I can reach it. That's all that matters, I guess if you're shorter, it might be a little bit of a difficult reach, because it's kind of in the middle of the engine compartment, all the way at the back. Uh, easy to get to the air filter and everything like that, obviously I'm probably going to be upgrading that to a, a K&N, maybe drop in fil filter or, or better filter, either way. Than the standard paper that comes with it not important but easy access to that uh, one thing i didn't i was actually not expecting is they still use the old direct off the shaft cooling fan up here and they're not using utilizing an electric fan which typically i've seen you know they, they use the electric fans and uh, that'll increase your fuel economy right there but maybe they needed the airflow to cool this engine down not too sure maybe i'll have to do a little research on that um, but yeah, there's the engine compartment. Not a big thing, and obviously I'm not a big geek or anything. Oh yeah, I am a geek to be honest, but uh, I'm not a 100% perfect mechanic or anything like that. But I do some things from time to time, and I always change my own oil and everything like that. So uh, hopefully I'll learn more about this as the uh, months and hopefully years continue. One thing I did want to say before I shut up here was uh, the uh, cylinders. To hold the hood up 
Love, love that. My last truck did not have that, and I think that's a big key. And there is one on each side, so you get a nice stable hood. And uh, if I was to bring it up here and let go of it, it's going to open up by itself, so that's always a plus. One thing I wanted to do now is to show you, or I let you listen to what the dual pipes and everything have to offer. So here we are back in the vehicle. The engine is now running. If I actually probably uh, go to my display here and go to my vehicle info, I'm sure that there will be oil pressure 53 psi. There we go. Not a big deal, but but this is what it sounds like. It is absolutely the quietest truck I've ever ridden in, no doubt. And uh, my brother has a Silverado half ton. And I had a 2006 Silverado half ton. He has an 08, I believe is what it is. And uh, I did drive the Fords and the Chevys and the Toyota and the Nissan. And the Dodge is the best riding and the best sounding and the best and the quietest cab and the most comfortable, to be honest. They really did a fantastic job of making this truck very, very comfortable. So one more thing I wanted to point out here before I'm done is with a lot of trucks you get this front area here with the front wheel is has a nice guard inside here get keeps the mud out of the engine compartment you know it makes it easy cleaning all you gotta do is hose this down sometimes scrub it a little bit mainly a hose you just get all the crap out of there and in the back of course the mud gets all over the inside of the everywhere however because dodge has probably it's more like likely because it has a coil spring back here they now have enclosed the rear too and I love this feature. This is going to make cleaning an absolute breeze because it's all molded plastic, real slick and smooth. You just hose this sucker down and there's no mud all the way up and, and uh, mainly before you'd always get it back here and then it would always cake up into the back of the bumper. Always. Every truck I've owned. Same thing. I don't think it's going to be as big of a thing on this one. So I really like that. So here's one place nobody ever gets with their video to show, show you what the underside of the truck looks like and uh, I don't know what all the components are but you can obviously see there is where you change the oil um, and uh, it's not one of my fortes but at the same time I think it's highly important to know everything there is to know about your truck obviously here's the fuel tank I don't have the large capacity fuel tank um, you can actually order it with a little larger one than that one but there she is, that's the underside of the truck. Uh, quite a bit of ground clearance, you don't have to ju jump it up at all to change your oil, which is nice. I'm getting under here just fine and comfy and I can actually, I have more than enough room. And uh, right here in the middle is plenty of room up here to do any maintenance you need to do. But that's the underbelly of the beast. So there you have it. I have my wide angle lens now and now since I wanted to show you the interior so now I'm a little probably a little smaller than I was before at the beginning. But that is my review of the 1500 or 2012 half ton 1500 Dodge Ram quad cab pickup. I have like I said the Bighorn model with the 5.7 liter Hemi and it's the best truck decision I've ever made in my life. To recommend this truck and then we finally got it, it is just an amazing truck and uh, it definitely has power uh, the engine I think is 390 horsepower and 407 foot pounds of torque and it has every bit of those compared to the Chevy which is the 5 point we have a 5.3 liter it, it doesn't even compare it really doesn't for everything and even gas mileage um, my, my dad has put a lot more miles on his truck he has the exact same setup and uh, this gas mileage is basically the same between this 5.7 and the other 5.3. There really isn't a whole lot of difference. And I think it's more because there is a lot more torque and horsepower in this engine in engine transmission combination. And uh, the eco mode, or it'll have, it has variable um, valve timing and everything. So what will happen is the, the engine will go from 8 cylinders to 4 cylinders when it doesn't need all 8. 
it lasts longer, it holds longer in this engine, and I think it's because it has more torque and horsepower. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. It seems like every time I look at a truck video, they're always the same. There are a few out there of this truck, and I wanted to get a little more intimate, intimate with this truck and uh, show you a little more things. And uh, if you have any reviews yourself and you want me to check out, let me know. Otherwise, with this video, please comment below, subscribe above, and uh, I hope to do more videos similar to this. Um, I'm a, I hope to do one as soon as I get my Lear cap and get used to using it, just like I did with this truck for a week. And I already love the truck. So, With that said, thanks for watching. I appreciate you checking out the video, and uh, have a wonderful day.